<laughs> hey. hey everybody welcome to two guys and some horror tonight we're gonna go through one of the best horror movies ever made my personal opinion please don't at me bro uh evil dead now evil dead was directed by fede alvarez who is an uruguayan guy he actually got this uh this job after a short was posted on youtube and uh he got an offer for a $40 million deal to uh, make Evil Dead, the Evil Dead remake. So, uh, super interesting there um, that you said that. Because the budget for the movie itself is like $17 million, um, But you're saying he got paid $40 million to make it? Uh, no, 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 no. The, it said he, so he made a deal to direct a 30 to $40 million uh, sci-fi movie. Okay. But it wound up being him directing and co-writing the Evil Dead remake. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Because I was like, wow, he got to pocket $23 million off that. That's pretty <laughs> I, cool. <laughs> I don't think they pay directors that much, especially starting ones that are just starting out. True. So... <clears throat> this is not uh, an official remake, but I'm usually not a fan of remakes in the first place. Um, you know, uh, this recording isn't a remake either, but it wound up being one. <laughs> it was an intentional remake. <laughs> oh, yeah. Stop it. You're going to make me cry. Um, so for <laughs> so the listeners, is <laughs> this is a re-recording because my computer crashed during the initial recording of this episode. So this is our second take, um, and we're, we're just going to knock it out. Um, and we lost our, our one of our best bloopers. We had somebody uh, come in the voice chat. We were doing this on Discord, and uh, that was a uh, someone popped in. Great to keep, but we lost it. And they go, uh, I think they said they they asked, uh, "Hey, are you you live right now?" <laughs> no, <laughs> no, not live yeah, we, at all. We, we live now. <laughs> um, but yeah. So, anyways, so back to the movie. Okay, so to recap. We're doing the Evil Dead 2013. Uh, the director was Fede Alvarez, um, who got the job because he did a YouTube short, and they're like, yeah, come, you're awesome. Uh, the writers were Fede Alvarez and Rodo Sayagues, um, and they also credit Sam Raimi because he created this universe that this film is set in. And then the budget was $17 million and the body count for this film was only 9 which isn't very high uh, when you think about it. So, um, like I said, it's not a remake officially. It's more of a continuation in the same universe. Um, and we'll kind of get into that a little bit more in the... Multiverse. Yeah, multiverse. Sam um, Raimi's uh, butt-pulling. He's he. Uh, whenever Sam Raimi's asked about something he's done, he goes, oh, yeah, well, me and my friends, we were talking about doing this, this. He just throws out crazy random ideas. And uh, the actor who plays Ash, Bruce Campbell, actually called him out on this. He's like, whenever Sam Raimi talks, it's just a bunch of bullshit. But it's a bunch of bullshit that is potentially gold. Um, yeah. No. Well, Ash teaming up with Mia. Well, that would have been awesome. That. Yeah. It might happen. There's a Evil Dead movie in the works. Or I... so Sam Raimi says. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Sam Raimi said it, so you never know. <laughs> so, uh, Clark, do you have any quick reviews for this? Um, I think yeah. you had a little something, right? This is Drug Rehab, the movie. So... In it, our main character, or our main hero, Mia, goes through her, her drug withdrawal and fights through it with her friends in a cabin and escapes finally being freed of her addiction. That's, that's the real story of this film. A dash of horror. Um, that, with a, what, what do you mean? <laughs> this, I mean, yeah, nine people die, okay, but they had it coming. Uh, a lot of them did, and... We're going to get right into that. So well, we're going to head right. into... Grandpa didn't. Hey, Grandpa. Grandpa never deserves it. Um, no, dude. Oh, oh, what Grandpa. a good boy. What a good Rest boy. Rest in peace, Grandpa. Grandpa's Rip. a dog, guys. Um, so we're going to get into the plot and the synopsis um, once again. So we open the movie with a girl wandering through the woods. She's a bloody mess, and a weird figure in the distance is watching her, and it turns out to be none other than... Teenager. Oh, I thought you were going to say Hillbilly 1, Hillbilly 2. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Hillbilly 1, well, short, it was short-haired Hillbilly and long-haired mm -hmm. Hillbilly, mm -hmm. uh, which we, we as a viewer, we assume that they're going to rape her because we're watching Deliverance. Um, in the I, thought I, I thought I had the wrong movie on for about no, 45 no, yeah, yeah. seconds. When you hear the banjo, ding, 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 
Dude, yeah. I thought I seriously thought I was watching I Spit on Your Grave and not uh, <laughs> Evil really? Dead. Yeah, I was worried. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah. Anyhow, so this is the prologue. So this girl, she's we're, we're we as the audience, we're on her side. She's getting grabbed by hillbillies. She's being put right in front of a bruja, which is a Mexican witch, and she's like, there are dead cats all over hanging from the ceiling and things like that. It's great. It's it's a family room. Um, this girl's like, um, daddy. And this man appears from the shadows, her father, bespect bespectacled. I don't know what the word is there. Wearing glasses. And yeah. he tells her that she killed his wife, her mother. Yep. And she's, well, she's like, she's like super innocent. <laughs> where's mom? We're still on her side. Mm -hmm. You killed her. And then that's basically when she switches from this sweet, innocent girl to uh, a demon. She's basically a deadite. She's the first deadite that we see in this movie. Um, and she says so sweetly to him, I will rip your soul out. And then I think it's your favorite quote from the movie. Yeah, it leads into, uh, Motherfucker, I will kill you like I killed your whore. Which is, uh, yeah, good, good job, daughter. So yeah. daddy uh, lights a match when he's failing. You know, she says that to him. And that's it. Great, great tension building this moment, I would say. I would say as the audience, you don't know what's going on. And they, they do it very well. Very strong. Very strong intro to any horror movie. Yeah, probably one of the better ones that I've seen, for sure. So he lights her up. He lights her on fire. And that is... Um... That's your prologue. That's your intro to the movie. That's where we begin. Yeah, um, we get lit. We get, we get lit. We get Not lit. cellophane. We don't get cellophane. <laughs> we get lit. Yeah. Um, so then we go into the aerial shot. Um, it's above the forest where the cabin is. Um, and it's paired with some really good music, in my opinion, during this aerial shot. And um, I personally like aerial shots that are done well like that, where you're just mm -hmm. kind of panning over this continuous vast uh forest or treeage or whatever it might be with some really good music and uh um, that's our intro I hate them, man <laughs> no you don't i hate i hate aerial <laughs> shots i hate close-ups i hate everything no uh, you're i agree i agree it was very well done <laughs> um so then so then we actually get to meet our characters um some of the best um i i want to i want i'm gonna i'm just gonna say what you said last time uh in the first recording uh some of the best horror actors and actresses you've ever seen because they're scream queens yeah so do you remember the three names that i gave you <laughs> i only remember jane levy because yep. she's my her hero now oh my god she's awesome so jane levy plays mia uh we have jessica lucas who plays olivia and we have elizabeth blackmore who plays natalie um and then our two guy characters mia's brother is david um that is shiloh fernandez and eric the best friend lou taylor pucci um, the, the passive aggressive best friend passive aggressive best friend also teacher and clearly the best person to read from any book in a house okay if you have if you have a book written in language language you can't read just bring him over he even knows dead languages uh that's very good world building here we uh, left out the best thing. character uh grandpa oh shit grandpa no. can't forget grandpa oh, grandpa spoilers grandpa Spoil spoilers grandpa you can't do that you can't say that that's not fair we haven't it even gotten fair. there yet doesn't matter grandpa so mia yeah. so mia and the friends and the family member david um they're all there they're at the cabin the family's cabin for a reason um she's a struggling addict um she's addicted to heroin and she's making a pack to get off the smack yep she does and her uh so really kind of want to her brother is from out of town he he's been away for years chicago and chicago yeah with and he brought his girlfriend who not, nobody there knows except for him and his sister you know their mom got sick and he wasn't around for that time period and his best friend is passive aggressive and very bitter about it and olivia is kind of in the whole well he's here mood and his sister's kind of like yeah he's here and the best friend's like yeah He's here, but I'm still mad. Ooh. Yeah, there's a lot of this whole, yeah, great that you're here, but we've been dealing with this shit for far too long, and it's nice of you to finally join us. 
she OD'd. And the brother's like, yeah, wait, she OD'd? And he's like, yeah, she died temporarily, which foreshadowing, by the way. Uh, we, we mentioned this earlier, but... Uh, Your sister died. They had yeah, a defibrillator. She... Yeah. So keep yep. that in your pocket for later in the film because they bring that back. Put a pin in it. And we'll bring it back he, in a minute. And she, uh, it's like, oh no, well I'm here now. And he, he made her a necklace, like, and he gave, gives it to her. And she dumps out her heroin. And that's when our rehabilitation movie starts. And we, we see the process of overcoming your addictions. Yep. Um, I, I, I definitely agree with you 100%. This movie is totally about um, rehabbing and trying to get past those inner demons that you might have um, that, that you could be struggling with. And um, it's really cool that they're able to take such an old school movie like Evil Dead, bring it to you know the 2010s decade, and really tell a whole nother story uh, alongside it. I think that's it's, it's really neat to see. Um, so Mia starts smelling some weird, awful smells that nobody else smells except for Grandpa, the dog. Um, you know what? Yeah. I don't want to cut you off here, but Do Grandpa's it. actually the, the the worst character in the show, in the movie. What? He ruined, he's the reason this movie happened. Oh, yeah, if he had never smelled. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, so Grandpa starts pawing at the carpet. I love Grandpa, don't get me wrong, but it's his fault. It's his end up in glasses. Eric. <laughs> Yeah, Eric, uh, the, our teacher friend who can read any language. Doc paws at the carpet, and the brother's like, Whoa, there's a trap door under here. Lifts out the carpet, and there's, like, cake blood. He's like, is that blood? Let's explore. Lifts it up, and they all go downstairs. And in the basement, there's the, uh, the Necronomicon, as well as just a bunch of dead, de decomposing cats, rabbits, animals. It's that and, scene from the beginning of the movie. Well, and, like, the... Yeah, it was, it, we went back to where we were at the start of the film in that basement. And I really want to say they did a great job of kind of showing the, uh, the what is it called when you're trying to get off uh, substances? Withdrawals? Uh, yeah, withdrawals. I'm great okay. with words. Uh, so she's going through <laughs> her withdrawals and she's like, I smell this. And she's like, you're just being super sensitive. And the blonde's like, I don't smell anything. Nothing smells. And it oh, turns out man, there's yeah. just a bunch of dead bodies underneath them, like animal bodies, but still. Yeah, and you're in a cabin. It's made of wood. The slats aren't perfectly butted up against each other. There isn't a layer of cement between you and that basement. Everyone would be smelling that. So let's be honest here and just understand that there are some goofs. Uh, we didn't uh, talk about those in the quick review, but we'll, we'll kind of bring them up as we go on. Um, and everyone would have smelt that. Not just well, the lady I, with sensitive smell. It was very solidly built. It's a very solidly built cabin. I can, I can justify, okay, maybe they didn't smell it. And normally the trap door has enough like area for the smell to kind of get through. I can I can say sure. We'll Why give not? them. We'll give them that. But uh, I don't. That doesn't bother me as much as kind of the friend picks up the book and he starts reading through it and and it's just like all right, so he's gonna summon Satan. Well, yeah. So that's our first glimpse at the Necronomicon um wrapped in and this is what makes me laugh it's wrapped in a black trash bag and barbed wire and i mean tight like the barbed wire is tightly wrapped around it um and you still decide to go touch it like you think that that's a safe choice you idiot i think they tried to get rid of it and they're like all right we'll just leave it here for the time being because none of the characters in the prologue show up again no uh the bruja nobody do, i don't know the, the ending guy might be one of them. He might be short-haired hillbilly. Who knows? Um, anyhow. So, um... Yeah, he picks up the book and he starts reading it and he, yep. he detectives his way through it. He stencils over the top. Honestly, and, really well shot scene, though. Definitely yep. dug it. Oh, man. Well, actually, ooh, trivia here. The, uh, the art for the... The Abomination is actually... From it's it was uh, inspired by the original artwork for the poster for Evil Dead. Mm -hmm. Because and they couldn't use the original um, book or the book artwork because of um, the the original artist wouldn't allow it. Um, so they actually had to bring in a different artist to do all of these pieces of work um, from scratch. 
so it is it is really cool and definitely a piece of trivia just um for everyone at home listening um pretty interesting i i really like um god dang i really love this movie i can't i can't believe how much i like this movie um it's it's probably one of the best horror movies ever made so eric the idiot reads from the book he's not an idiot dude how how is he supposed to know but he very very intelligently it's bound in barbed wire (laughs) yeah it's bound in barbed wire it's made of human flesh no clark i can't even give you a pass how did you how do you know it's human flesh have you ever felt flesh well i didn't open that book it was so oh god Uh, just thinking about it i don't even want to i don't even want to think about touching it uh if I found a book and it was in barbed wire, I might do the same thing, man. Like, if we ever go out into a cabin in the woods and we find the Necronomicon or some evil book and it's like, don't read this out loud, I'd be like, <laughs> hey, Curtis. No. <laughs> All right. I want everyone to know, if I ever go camping with Clark, please, 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 please check on me. Make sure we're okay. In a cabin. In a uh, cabin. Uh, with, in the... uh, with a hidden basement. The cabin but... in the woods. All right, back on track. <laughs> So Eric reads from the book. Mia's out uh, withdrawing in the rain. Um, throws up. And she, she has that moment when the the forest creature hits her. She pukes, throws up in well, the dirt. Well, let's talk about the uh, camera panning here because mm-hmm. this is very classic. Uh, it's probably one of the most uh, iconic things from the Evil Dead movies because whenever the evil gets summoned, you see like the camera panning very quickly towards the, the cabin or the location and does that. Hits Mia and then she just vomits. Yep. Um, Pretty gross. Anyhow, <laughs> Pretty she gross. Side and she's like, "You have to get me out of here." To her brother and her friend Olivia, and she's like, "I gotta get out." And they're like, "No, we can't let you out. You're 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 just kind of crazy because you're going through rehab." Which great great reason to to stay in the cabin. Like great motivation right there when the we're, weird things start happening. We're just and, trying to help you. Yeah. Well, yeah. fuck you very much. So she goes in her room and she, and her brother's like, oh, I'm going to go help her. And she took the keys and now she's in a car and she's driving off into the distance. But she decides to land her car into some water instead. Mm-hmm. And then she gets raped by a tree. And Curtis had some, uh, we were talking about the first movie's uh, tree rape scene. And I thought what you said there was pretty pretty intriguing yeah so basically i just thought that in this movie they did a much better job of getting it kind of over with so that way you're not like lingering in that moment because in the first movie they kind of um to me sam raimi uh they they took it to the next level you know they they tie her down with the tree so this tree's branches are tying the girl down um and forcing her legs apart and all that jazz and shoving the tree branch up her hoo-ha um and, and raping her and in this movie they do it in a very in my opinion it's a much better quick scene of it not that you know i'm in no way shape or form is rape ever okay but in homage to the original movie and keeping with the way that she gets possessed for the first time they do a really nice job of doing it quickly getting it over with and keeping it very similar to the original film so basically she comes into contact with abomination mia which is herself um, and then Abomination Mia throws up a piece of tree. It's like a black gunky tree. And then that shoots up her hoo-ha and she is now a deadite. So that's the first right. uh, deadite that the friends encounter. And it's Mia. Poor Mia. Well, she's she's not a deadite yet, but she's getting there. Um, right. At this point, she's uh, she's had the seed, pun not really intended, of I the mean, devil inserted in her. That's what you'd call and... it. Yeah. <laughs> The way for her to incubate it is through scalding hot water, which at this point, I think we should kind of talk about some of the goofs. Uh, in one scene, a deadite shoots people with a nail gun, and uh, there's there's no air compressor, there's no ho- there's no air hose attached to it, which I believe, which I'm okay with because of the how she how she gets the her skin kind of the skin lesions and the skin boils from the heat and the water when she's taking a shower the boiler starts to overheat and it's kind of out of this worldly the way it happens so it, i don't know by that logic it, it kind of makes sense for these demons to shoot nails out of a nail gun without an air compressor yeah i mean you could you could bend it right and say that that's feasible i mean 
It's not, but... I mean, they can do... They can fly across a room, you know, without walking, these yeah. demons. So, in theory, I mean, we could bend the rule, kind of, and just say, yeah, I guess they could shoot these nails without, a, you know, an air compressor, but I don't like it, personally. I think it is definitely like a goof and, yeah. you know, a little bit laughable, maybe. Maybe they were trying to add some humor without realizing it. <laughs> well, before she even finds Grandpa, or before, jeez, I just ruined that. Before Aww. she even <laughs> takes the shower, um, like, well, while she's in the shower, I guess, her so brother she's, finds yeah. the dead body of Grandpa, and he he's, it finds flashes the, the hammer. hammering him. Yeah. yeah. Oh. And then she takes her boiling lesion hot sour. They, they save her from the, the bathroom. Her brother breaks the door open puts her in her room and then well he throws her in the car right yeah and they're gonna sure. drive they're trying to drive away but um they get to the bridge and in the original movie this is something very similar happens as well where um ash is trying to get his girlfriend out of there at the time right i think cheryl was her name and when they're hit, when they get to the bridge, the bridge is destroyed basically, and there's no way across. And there's a storm, and water's raging. And in this one, there's really no bridge. It's more like the road has just been washed out, and it's a giant, uh, raging river. Um, and there's no way for them to get across. So he has to take the burned Mia back to the cabin. And Olivia, um, since she's a registered nurse, I believe, um, yes. has to provide medical care for the burns. But the burns are so. Ear. she's saying they are second or third degree. second or third degree yeah which is pretty rough um <clears throat> so i believe she gave her morphine to knock her out right uh which for a struggling drug addict i'm not too sure that's i don't i don't know if that's the right thing to do like because i don't know she gave her morphine like literally morphine she gave her i can't remember a what she said it was just a sedative maybe it wasn't morphine which is good because I think I for a struggling heroin addict, you don't want to give them a drug that's going to make them feel good and high as a kite. That's going to break the withdrawal and ruin her rehabilitation, right? Right. So I think I you're right. I think she just gave her a heavy sedative that would knock her out for a couple hours. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't think she used morphine. But it didn't uh, but... do shit. <laughs> Yeah, so, well, they're in the room, and they're fighting over something at some point or another when she's out unconscious, and Mia shows up with the shotgun, and she's oh, just yeah. all creaked out, and she's kind of twitching. Like, if you've ever played uh, Left 4 Dead, like a witch, otherwise it's just kind of like the creaky zombie. Mm -hmm. And she shoots her... Uh, her brother with the shotgun. Yeah, in the arm. And she screams, "You're all gonna die tonight!" Yeah, uh, which she is vomits pretty... in Olivia's mouth. Oh my god, that's that scene. So I read an article about that scene. Um, basically, Mia's character, Jane Levy, felt terrible because she basically had a tube all the way down her throat because they actually wanted it to look like the vomit is coming out of her mouth, and she's just got this constant flow of vomit going on Jessica Lucas's character, Olivia. And after the scene was done, she felt so bad because she's a sensitive person that she ended up going into the corner and crying because she felt like she was drowning her friend Jessica <laughs> in real life. Um, I love it. Yeah, it was... Love it. What a gripping scene. Very right well be done. Right before that, though, Eric is... <laughs> this is where I, like... I can't... I don't like Eric's character. I really don't. Because he's having a monologue about everything not being fine and how... Just, it just keeps getting worse. Nothing here is fine. Everything is getting worse. Have you not pay, been paying attention? It's like, well, he's, he's pessimistic. Dude, uh, he's, he's upset. He's angry. He's, he has demons. He's fighting, obviously. I'm like, no. To make amends with his friend, but he's struggling with it. I mean, oh, man. He's I just, trying. No, in his I just. Own way, but he's being a dick, you know? He read from the book. <laughs> yeah, but honestly. I don't believe in this stuff either. Like I might, I might do the same thing. I, I, I don't understand that logic, but moving on. Yeah. She, uh, Olivia goes in the bathroom after being vomited on. And, uh, dude, what she sees in the mirror, she sees herself and her face cut off. Probably one of the scariest quick visuals in this movie. Right. 
well, there are a lot of random jump scares that are just kind of there, which I wanted to complain about. Uh, so like when the cat shows up, that's a jump scare. With the window thing or the mirror thing, that's a jump scare. I hadn't noticed that there were as many as there were until this t this watch through. Yeah, I don't. Um, I'm probably not. Uh, what is it? Desensitive, desensitized to jump scares lately because they're just not. I mean, they don't really get me anymore. Um, they get old. Yeah, they get old. Yeah. When you start paying attention to them, and you're, you're used to when people when somebody actually builds up tension the right way, which they do in this film, it's great. But if the movie's full of jump scares, which here there aren't as many, it's just annoying. Yeah, it's very annoying, and I agree. Um, I just probably didn't notice them because I've I've just tuned them out. You know, once you've seen something enough times and it's not good anymore, you just kind of stop caring about it, and you're like, oh yeah, there's that again, whatever. So for me, those jump yeah. scares throughout, yeah, not not really. Uh, it's just not worth it. Yeah, you're right. Well, the, there were some that were that were good, like some surprises, but I wouldn't call those jump scares. Like um, seeing like her in face in the mirror. That's not to me. That's not a jump scare. That's more or less. Like they didn't use music either to help like scare you. It was literally just the sight of her face right. being ripped off in an great. evil smile. Yeah, it was great. It was great, and then. Yeah, and she's like freaking the freak out, and she like cuts her face off with glass later on in the movie. It becomes a, a dead end on her own. Um, before I jump into that though, do you do you have anything else you want to add? Um, let's see. No, I mean I don't, th I don't think so. Basically, I just can't believe how, like Eric is just a pincushion in this movie. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. Like he triggers, he, he reads from the book, whether or not he knew what he was doing. I, I don't care. Right. That's fine. Um, he accidentally triggered something to happen, but well, that's, yeah. that's like the start of him being the pin cushion because then for the rest of this movie, he literally is a pin cushion. Yeah, no, for sure. You'd nail, nail cushion. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, he slips on her cheek that she cuts off. Yeah. Oh, and hits the floor. Like that is. Boom. Well, the he wipe. hits the toilet seat, right? Yeah, yeah. No, he bashes his on head. His kidneys like on or whatever. Oh. She's about to, you know, she's trying to kill him or whatever. So yeah. he, he kills her. Well, he shows, she, stabs, she stabs she like, stabs him with a mirror. Yeah. And then she takes the needle that he was going to use to sedate her. And then, or that she was going to use to sedate Mia. I don't know. There's a needle somehow. And then she just yeah, stabs know, him repeatedly with the freaking needle over and over again. Yeah. Ugh. But she doesn't inject it. No. Ugh. So then he crushes her head in with that broken piece of the toilet seat. Let's see. Yeah, he survives. He yeah. doesn't die. Um, He holds on. He's a fighter. I don't care what you say. The guy's a trooper. Yeah, but they're yeah. all they're all gonna die tonight. I mean, Mia no. said it. <laughs> Mia said it. Yep, they all die. <laughs> Everybody dies, guys. This nobody survives in this movie. Everybody dies except for Mia. Mia, oh, actually, Mia dies. Never mind. Um, <clears throat> spoilers. <laughs> but that that was a. Uh, they lock Mia in the cellar. Um, before, mm -hmm. or, like before or after this, when she's like gonna sedate her. And so with Mia in the cellar, this uh, Natalie's sitting there. She she has no idea. Was she there when when he's like, she tried to kill me, she tried to kill me? I'm pretty sure, yeah. I think she was. But like Mia's like talking to her and stuff, and she goes down into the cellar for God knows whatever reason. Their friend just went crazy and tried to kill. Well, I guess Natalie doesn't know these people, but. I think she's I, just stupid. I assume she goes down there because she hears Mia whimpering in fear and yeah. has a heart and just wants to, you know, be a friend. Yeah. It's her boyfriend's it's... sister, right? I mean, she wants to make a good impression. Well, this is big mistake number three in the movie. Mm -hmm. I mean, number one with Grandpa smelling and finding the blood and then the guy reading the book. This one, I, I don't think you can really forgive. Like, she opens up the uh, the chains to the basement. And then she, uh, she gets meed. She gets 
like this is actually one of the one of the good scenes too because she's climbing out like tensions building up she's trying to climb up one of the stairs is broken she's trying to make her way out of the uh the cellar and then like it looks like she's out for you as the viewer and then she just like it's you just see her fly backwards into the cellar so i wrote down i'm pretty sure everyone in the theater would have jumped right then at that moment because you think like you said you think she's safe she even stops like kind of pauses for a moment like oh i'm safe and then i mean she just gets ripped back in there by mia it's it's oh man it was good it was it was definitely definitely good mm -hmm. so david tries to go <clears throat> and save natalie right yeah and this is where i think my favorite <laughs> quote might be um so mia yells oh, why don't you come down here so i could suck your cock pretty boy mia yeah your sister. sister's not here she's <laughs> she's in she's hell getting raped and i'm like oh my god this exchange is i love it these deadites just have no chill man <laughs> she's in hell getting raped nonchalantly just says it just as like a tease so very well done torment so yep. he this is where he chains up hammers puts things away and natalie's like she got bit by mia and so she's like squeezing out the black pus out of her hand yeah so she's in the kitchen trying to like fix her wound or whatever yeah but it's just kind of this is where it's not Eric... working out for her it's just getting worse and so mia's head kind of pops out of the uh, cellar door then she's like she's kind of baiting her to cut her arm off so well no natalie doesn't cuts doesn't what? doesn't mia so so natalie uh realizes her hands changing mut mutating yeah, so, and well, she sees the black the black yeah, stuff yeah. spread and mia's like no no don't cut it off. yes cut it off. yes she wanted her to cut it off she was fucking with her are you sure because i feel like yeah. she'd kind of not want her to so it so it attacks everybody no it didn't matter to her she, okay. she didn't because like after she gets she cuts it off she's like ah, i cut it off i'm better now she still turns yeah it doesn't matter no it's already in her body it's in her system well, that might be it, or maybe she died. I don't know how they explain it. They don't really. They don't. Yeah, you're right. It Eric could be turns and... loss of blood. Yeah. Maybe death is the final turn for a deadite. I, yeah. I, I, in this movie, maybe. I don't know. I think they just kind of took liberties with it. Okay. There's no real logic behind it. So during I, that scene, how does she cut off her hand? It's with a turkey carving <laughs> It's a turkey carving knife, and she cuts it off very slowly on the so, bicep. So twisted. And you see, you see her do this, and Mia's like, "No, no, no, don't do it." She wanted her to do it, I feel. But yeah, the solution. She found it. Um. Good, good job. That it, while she's cutting off her arm, Eric and uh, and her brother Josh, they're they're in the room talking. He's like, "I summoned this. I'm sorry." We can kind of make amends at this point, but not until when I'm near death. Um, well, yeah, and he goes into his whole exposition and explains their, you know, five souls have to be sacrificed. He In basically very specific ways. Yeah, he basically lays everything out for uh, David and and I guess Natalie at that point. He's kind of talking to Natalie, but she's not. Well, really, Natalie's. She's not really there. No, she's still in the kitchen. Um, so like oof. he tells him the solution is like this is how you get rid of the of the abomination. He's like, gotta burn them, you gotta bury them. Got they have to suffocate and die, or you have to uh, take off, cut off all their their limbs. And he's like, oh man, all I can't save me. Oh no. So he uh, he's with his best friend, and he's like, oh, I guess there's only one solution, kind of save her. But uh, Natalie shows up at this point. With the nail gun? That... Yeah, with the nail gun. And there's in no the living room. in there. In the living room. Pretty sure she's the killer in Clue. Yep. So <laughs> she pew pews Eric. Eric gets all these nails in his beautiful body. Back to the pin cushion joke. <laughs> yep. And uh, Josh ends up killing his girlfriend. Oh, man. Josh? Well, he tries to. You mean David? David, yeah, sorry. <laughs> he kills his girlfriend. Yeah, well, I'm sorry. 
I'm sorry. Josh Whedon. Josh. Josh Whedon ends up killing his Josh, girlfriend. Josh Whedon. Joss. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, yeah, both of us. So he, he kills his girlfriend. And he's like, so he burns the bodies of his friends. He comes in, you know, he's going to he's gonna take care of his sister. And then he hears his lullaby. And he and Mia face off. Um, yeah. And he figures that he's like, oh, the, the, the only way to do this is, is the hard way. Yeah. It's like he makes his own little defibrillator and he grabs like plastic bags. And it's like, I wonder what he's going to do with that, with the foreshadowing. Well, so when he leaves yeah. Eric, uh, Eric has a really funny <laughs> quote, um, where he's just, he's, he's so like done, right? He's been getting his ass kicked this whole movie. Yeah. <clears throat> and he's out there in the rain and he's just like, I just don't want to become the devil's bitch. And yeah. I'm like, dude, you already are. <laughs> like, well, he's in the basement. He's bleeding out. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, you already are, man. Like, it's sorry. He but so saves the day, though. So when Eric, Eric is... when David goes into those into the uh, basement, like, there's all the water in there now, right from the rain, I guess. Uh, it, it's filling up or whatever. And apparently, that's supposed to be kind of an homage to Ash's character getting trapped in a in a well. I think in Army of Darkness when he has to fight a dead yeah. or something like that. Um, just a little, you know, that one isn't really so much a fun fact. It's more just of like a, this is one, another way that they're kind of giving homage to the original evil dead franchise. Um, yeah. but yeah, Eric saves David from Mia one last time in the basement. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, she gets injected with the, uh, with sleepy the time to save. So, he sits down in the basement, and that's when Eric, you know, he takes a nap, and he sleeps. Um, so, pretty boy, uh, boyfriend, brother, um, Bilbo, he jumps up the stairs, and he uh, puts a plastic bag on his sister's face, and he starts burying her alive. And then the deadite comes up, and she's like, what you doing? He's like, I'm burying you alive. And then she starts, like, fucking with them. He's like, Mia's dead. He buries her alive to the point where she dies completely. Yep. Every time you think this movie's over, you get a little bit more. And I absolutely love it. Well, it it starts out at a, at a two. Or maybe a, at a, at like a six with the very beginning, the intro. And then it kind of peters down to a, like a three. And then moves to like a four. And then a five. And then a six. And then a seven. Then an eight. And it stays at eight. And then hits nine at the very end. So very solid. And then it goes to 11. It goes to 11. Yeah, um, yeah exactly. So so we get Deadeye Eric makes a return to fuck him over one last time. Well, well this is Eric is Jesus, okay? But before this, before <laughs> Eric even shows up, um, he resuscitates Mia. This is, yeah, the defibrillator moment. Uh, he defibs her, but... The plastic bag is still on her face. Yeah, that just so it doesn't. I don't know how she's gonna breathe. But no. Good luck with that, buddy. Yep. Nope. That's that was one of the other goofs uh, that she, we were talking about. She saves his life, or he saves her life. She's up, and he's like, "All right, I'm gonna go get the car keys." And then he goes in the house, and that's where Eric, Jesus, Eric shows up. Yeah, and he, um, what does he hit him with? He stabs him in the neck. Is it a box cutter? I can't remember. I he, but he he punctures his he neck. But he, uh, Eric's like he's he he he's like you're gonna die. The the, the abyssal one's gonna get summoned. And so, uh, pretty boy Jorge Slim pulls out a shotgun and shoots a gas tank, like a plastic glass gas tank yeah. with a shotgun. Tells me to stay outside so she doesn't get hurt. It, um, it, why did why did the gas why did it catch fire though? So I want to know. I you know magic, demon it's blood, a, movie magic, movie Mo- magic, burns Im- the house down. <laughs> Imagination. Um. <laughs> so the last sacrifice has now happened. Hold on, wait. <laughs> One last thing on the fire because I just realized it. She's yeah. standing on the other side of the front door. It blows out the windows. It blows yeah. out everything around them, but uh-huh. it doesn't blow out the front door. Yeah. 
Oh, that makes sense. Okay. Movie magic. <laughs> uh, she, uh, yeah, so the last sacrifice has been made, and so, and now it starts raining blood. It's gratuitous amounts of blood. This is where they, they killed their budget in fake blood. They had 70,000 gallons used in this film. Okay, I'm going to throw a fun fact right now. Only 70,000 gallons. 50,000 was used in this final scene alone when it's raining down on them. In the original film, they used over 200,000 gallons of fake blood throughout the entire making of Evil Dead, the first why film. Don't, why don't they just use milk like they did in the second Evil Dead? I mean, you could, I guess. <laughs> All the blood in the second Evil Dead movie that shows up on the floor is, it's all milk with like food coloring in it. It's great. Oh. But the, uh, gross. <laughs> so the, the abyssal one shows up and it's, it's Mia. It's, it's, uh, Abomination Mia showing mm -hmm. back up one last time to face off against real Mia. This is her facing her addiction. If you want to go in some metaphoric route, we can say that. But I'm pretty sure that's not the intention. She, mm -hmm. uh, she sees this monster and she's like running away from it until she finds a shot or a chainsaw. The, you have to have a chainsaw if it's going to be an Evil Dead movie. Well, and she was going to grab, if you remember, she's in the shed. Like she sees the machete and she thinks about grabbing it and then she notices the chainsaw right above. <clears throat> so I guess. Abomination what, Mia got the good weapon. Yeah, I guess what I'm trying to say though is they. they Yes, they spoon-fed us what we wanted. We wanted a Chainsaw in the Evil Dead movie remake-ish. Kind of a remake, whatever. Um, but it's not like they just had this light on a <laughs> on a stand and the, yeah. and the the you know Chainsaw was sitting there. It was in a tool shed. She found it. Um, and, and yeah, hell yeah. Get that damn Chainsaw. Let's go. She gets it. She has to put gas in it. And then she's still getting chased while she's trying to get it to work. And... One of the scenes I think is probably one of the best moments in the film. Well, I like I like nice surprises, not jump scares. But is it, like, is it the car scene? No, 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 no. Before that, okay. she gets uh, the machete comes right through the wall. And oh, cuts yeah. Her, cuts her arm, cuts her leg. So Mia's getting getting ripped apart here. And she runs out in one of this, this very uh, high anxiety, high tension moment. She runs behind a car. She's underneath it. And then she chainsaws off abomination mia's leg and then abomination mia like throat flips the car over on top of mia's arm and mia is like stuck underneath there and she's like they're talking to each other abomination mia like throws some shit on her and mia's like oh fuck no and she like rips her arm her body off of her arm oh man it was arm's it was gruesome no oh, and her arm's still underneath the truck and then she cuts off the head of the abomination well, she splits it right down the middle, right? I, whatever happens, like <laughs> it got sawed in half and it's gone now. Go back to hell, bitch! Really? That's all we get when it after this. That's all you can muster. That's your final quote. Yeah, there was no, there were no corny lines. There were no. There was nothing. There was just that final line where she's like, "Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. say, just gonna kill you now." And that's it. And that's the end of the movie. Well, not yet, because she gets picked up. By a guy. Roll the credits. Because she's hitchhiking. And uh, that end of the movie surprise for people who are watching and staying near the end. Her eyes have like a yellow tint in them. Yeah, they've changed. She's she's changed. Yeah, man. But, Solid movie. But the credit scene. Something cool about the credits. Uh, it's cool. the original tape playing from the first film. So when the doctor um, is explaining the Necronomicon and the Deadites and all that from his research, that's the original voice of uh, Bob Dorian, the Professor Nobi from the original movie. And they use that in the credits, um, another one of those hat tip homage type moments. Um, right. And then we also get Bruce Campbell saying groovy. groovy. That was very uh, when I stayed for the, uh, the credits and you see Ash uh, get up and he just says groovy. Probably solid. Yeah, a goosebump moment in the theater for sure. Okay, so that was Evil Dead from 2013. Um, I'm going to move into the fun facts and trivia. We're a little short on time, so I don't know how deep we're going to go into these conversation-wise. Um, but feel free to stop me at any time, Clark, if you want to deep 
dive into more. Uh, so the first fun fact I have is 90% of this film was actually shot in order due to the controlled environment of that cabin. So um, that's pretty cool when you think about it. Everything that they did was chronologically done in the movie, also was done during filming, whereas other movies, they chop them up and then piece them back together. Um, if you take the first letter of each character's name, David, Eric, Mia, Olivia, and Natalie, it spells demon. Uh, we already talked about the, uh, the fake gallon, uh, fake blood or whatever. Um, this film was actually banned in the Ukraine because it was too violent. Yeah. Um, the talk of the making of an army of darkness two with Ash and Mia teaming up was sadly shelved by universal. Um, but you're right. There is talk of a army of darkness two currently, right? Like there's a potential for a film. Sam coming Raimi's out dropping little hints here and there, but he yeah. always does that. Yeah. I mean, I hope it gets picked up. I think we all do as evil dead fans. Yeah. Um, go ahead. Ash vs. Evil Dead was just canceled on Stars, which is kind of a nail in the coffin for that. So if they do make a new Evil Dead, I don't think Bruce Campbell's going to come back for it. I think he's done. He's I mean, too old. yeah, he's up there in age, man. It's I don't know how much left, how much he's got left in the tank, to be honest. No, he's he's too old. Um, if they brought Pablo back or uh, the other actress who the, was in it, like sure, maybe the chick, yeah. Uh, otherwise, just just let it die. I mean, I was kind of bummed that the show ended. The show's good, in my opinion. If you haven't seen it, Ash vs. the Evil Dead, um, like, it's decent. Season 1 is by far the best, um, but Season 2 and 3 were okay. I think it gets even more wild, which is Army of Darkness style. <laughs> well, the ending, I felt, was perfect for it. It was just the end of the world and just Ash fighting the Dead-Eyed Armies again. Yeah. It was just kind of... It's always been that thing, and I always always watch the alternate endings, by the way. And if you do buy this movie off of Amazon Prime, the 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 alternate ending is the official ending now in the unrated version. So, Correct. Uh, which I recommend this movie. It's like five bucks on Amazon Prime if you want to shelf it out that way, or you can go for a more solid copy. But definitely, it's also, uh, I mean, it it also pops up on Amazon Prime uh, every once in a while. Just as a free movie, uh, as, free as one movie. of as one of their instant Prime videos, yeah, um, that's how I originally watched it. I didn't uh, get to see it in theater back when it came out. Yeah, well, this movie has really solid acting, really solid, uh, really solid plot. It has a couple goofs here and there, but those are forgivable, I think, to kind of the main concept of what it was. And mm -hmm. I enjoy it. And if you if you can't watch gore, probably don't watch this movie. Uh, no. Yeah. If you, if you can't do gore, don't do it. Um, so a couple more fun facts and trivia. So the sweater that Mia wears is homage to Linda's character from the original. She wears a Michigan state sweatshirt as well. Yeah. Um, there was very well, little also Uruguayan soccer, the flag. Yes. Flags in there <laughs> because of the director is a fan of them. Yep. Uh, very little CGI because Fede wanted to keep, uh, it as close to Raimi's original vision from the first film. Um, and the Necronomicon is actually no longer called the Necronomicon. It is now called the Naturin de Manto. Might um, be a different book. They Exactly. Because this is a multiverse or whatnot, they actually lost the rights to Necronomicon, just to be fair. Um, like, they don't, the original, like, Raimi doesn't own the rights to that, if I remember right. He lost it to the... It was the, on the Star Show? Yes. So someone else owns the rights. They had to pay for that, and Evil Dead didn't want to pay for that, the, the uh, continuation or whatever. That um, doesn't make much sense to me because HP Lovecraft made the Necronomicon. So that's how do you get copyright? Is it that specific one? or I think it was the, yeah, the design, which wouldn't make sense for the name, but because they changed the design of it, they wanted to change the name of it to make it its own thing well they did it they did a good job yeah they this didn't screw it up standalone movie even if it's even if you do disconnect it from the other evil dead movies yeah less campy more serious but still still i i enjoyable. i i would say this one yeah even if it was campy probably could still be really good oh no there's nothing wrong with camp i'm just saying like this was yeah. this movie took itself a bit more seriously which i enjoyed as did you. 
So um, we're trying something new. This is the the final bit. This is our coming soon section of the episode. And since this is the first episode of the month, um, we're going to talk about a couple of films that are actually coming out in uh, January. Uh, the first one, I believe, is coming out January 3rd. It's right, The Grudge. The Grudge. Um, January 10th, Underwater is being released. And January 24th, The Turning is being released. Now, if you want us to do bonus episodes on any of these, um, let us know um, and reach out to us by... How would we do that, Clark? Two guys, Horopod. That is our name on Instagram as well as Twitter. That is the number two, guys, horror, pod. And then you could also reach out to us via our Gmail, which is two guys and some horror at gmail.com. Uh, I do want to, uh, we are trying new formats. We are trying new things. If you have feedback, uh, we'd love to take it um, anywhere we can improve and grow. So uh, we're, we're starting out. We're, we're eager. We're having fun with this. So, yeah. Definitely. And we appreciate you guys, um, those of you who listened through season one in 2019 and are still here in 2020. Uh, we appreciate you and we look forward to you guys getting more episodes. Uh, so, yeah, like, follow, subscribe. Um, come hang out. We enjoy having you guys. Yeah, but we lost that guy coming into the video. <laughs> uh, that's funny. We can mention it. I just did. <laughs> All right. Well, there we go. Ha 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 ha.